are locked and loaded live for the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show with Alex Jones right now reporting live from the DNC. And you cut off uh, with that, talking about that live feed from Inside Edition. Now, we, we were not able to play that. I haven't, I've been refreshing my Justin.tv, but I'm getting blurbs here and there. Why don't you describe it for us, Alex? Well, we get this call from Inside Edition this morning, and they say, we want to come over to your condo, the condo we rented for the week, right now. And so we queue up the tapes. We queue up them pushing us first. Uh, we queue up Malkin's people. We queue up Malkin's people posing with us and then screaming, kill Michelle Malkin. We show them separate media, YouTube clips. We're trying to, we got it all queued up for them, and they basically didn't want it. They just uh, didn't want it. They wanted me screaming at Michelle Malkin. And then they said, why did you pick on a little sweet lady, basically? And then they had a, a live feed back to their satellite truck downstairs, beaming it to New York, where they're going to edit it for the piece that's going to air on the East Coast. Uh, in fact, it's starting to air right now, people to tape Inside Edition. And I noticed that in the message boards, our listeners have already found the Inside Edition phone number and have been calling them, and they're saying, oh, we're, we're trying to interview Michelle Malkin. That was, you know, an hour ago. Mm-hmm. But it's just amazing. And, you know, the, here's this woman calling for concentration camps for American political dissidents, Arabs, Muslims. Uh, torture's good. Secret arrest is good. She said, I'm a liar about the Marines killing a puppy when it's even admitted mm-hmm. that they did kill the puppy. I mean, it's just, it's, there's no end to her. It's on video. It's about, I mean, come on. Well, well I mean, and, and we have the whole video. I came up, was nice at first, and her people got in my face, and I pushed them back. You know, they were bumping into me, and they grabbed our camera and assaulted Rob. And so all of this happened, and it just shows how sick and mentally ill our society is. And even mainline, you know, Inside Edition, Alex Jones, the big bully, is mean to the little sweetie pie, the, you know, the O'Reilly co-host of the past, uh, Michelle Malkin. But the good news is they're still operating in an old paradigm where they can lie, distort, manipulate. And we'll see what happens. It might be fair, but I don't think so. And it didn't matter. We were streaming live on the web. And we even told them that. It's like they didn't even connect or notice when they walk in the door. Uh, so uh, that went out there. In fact, that will post to archives on Justin TV. You click archives, and uh, you can uh, watch it right there in the archives. Maybe after Overdrive, maybe at 3.30 after the Nader interview, if you just want to play that out for the listeners, or, or people can go there and watch it for themselves. But I'm going to let you get back to work. We're going to dial in uh, to the system phone network in about 15 minutes with cell phones. We at least have that for the Nader interview. And uh, also, the Justin TV is going to go live about ten minutes before we get with Nader. Before so, we go, so- Alex, I want to get your comments on uh, like Mashable.com, who's saying that you're the one that called for her death. They're also calling you this ultra leftist. And there's this uh, Australian newspaper here, the Donkey Bray, that's also saying you're an ultra leftist and you called for her death. Isn't it convenient how? You know, you go from ultra right wing to ultra left wing all the time when you're not right or left. Well, we've also found out that these same people were with her the day before the protest, the one that Fox News kept for people flipping them off, mm-hmm. and that they screamed again, kill Michelle Malkin, kill Michelle Malkin. I mean, these guys, and then when leftists would surround us, they would say, it's Alex Jones, he's a capitalist pig, he's a stooge. So they were totally manipulating the crowd. And they would stand behind me screaming Michelle Malkin, Michelle Malkin, while I was talking, and kill Michelle Malkin. And it's all on video, it's all on YouTube. And uh, it's just it's just absolutely amazing. But Michelle Malkin did say on Fox Radio yesterday that I did not say kill Michelle Malkin. Uh, so, you know, you know, that doesn't seem to matter to Inside Edition or anybody else. But they're she also do, tried to be- equate you with those people that were trying to lift the mint, too, like you were somehow at that thing trying to lift the mint on the little television show. We're not No, I was, there, yeah, we're I not. was there documenting how Recreate 68 does everything to make themselves look like clowns. We're on record saying that. And we've got them, you know, the, the anarchists bumping into us and popping us and doing the rest of it. And, yeah, we're doing it right back to them. I'm not putting up with crap anymore. And, yeah, look, we're under attack. We're on the front lines. We're here. I'm going to throw it back to you. You might play some of those audio clips again. But this is a media war, ladies and gentlemen, the, you know, the true media, the true alternative media against the establishment and their, their um, little doppel, doppelganger alternative media. And uh, we can really defeat them on this by, by showing the truth. But, again, Ralph Bader coming up at about 50... Two minutes from now, 50, 54 minutes from now. And so we hope everybody will uh, tune in to that right here on the Alex Jones Show with Jason Burmas uh, sitting in. God bless you, and uh, we'll be uh, dialing in to the uh, phones. That- All right, folks, we're back. It's the Alex Jones Show. Alex just left us. Remember, we're going to have overdrive, so you can only get that over at InfoWars.com. And uh, we're going to have a live interview with Ralph Nader. I'm pretty excited about that. The refeed at InfoWars.com should also be very interesting. 
after what Paul Craig Roberts had to say today. Just shocking stuff. Now we're going to go back to Mark in Oregon, who was saying that he feels that the Bush administration's plans have gone flawlessly. I'm sorry I had to cut you off there before. Go ahead, Mark. That's no problem, Jason. Uh, hello again, and by the way, you know, thanks for the great energy that you bring to this show and Alex's stead. I mean, we don't miss anything, and that's saying a lot when Alex is not there. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Jason, uh, as I was saying, you know, I've been watching this administration for seven-plus years and uh, very closely, and I have not seen them fail on one point of their agenda, either domestically or internationally. Mm -hmm. And I believe that their agenda has predominantly been to affect this country, to make this country and everything that they've done to make this country look uh, as the evildoer in the eyes of the world, in the eyes of the people of the world outside of this country. No, I've and, always felt that way, too, and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to let you continue, but I've always felt, that's why today's uh, conversation with Paul Craig Roberts was so shocking to me. I've always felt like they want to make us into the new Nazi Germany, and, you know, eventually all this stuff will come out, 9-11, Iraq, Iran, and they will call for a new international tribunal that needs to head these things up and take over, and we'll lose all of our military power, all of our sovereignty, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. I mean, that's how I've seen it going. Uh, Paul Craig Roberts seems to disagree, thinks we're on the verge of nuclear warfare. Who knows? Continue. Yes, and what you have here is a premise that they have laid out for themselves, I think, from ancient times, essentially, and that has to do with the Phoenician myth about the phoenix who is reborn from the flames of its demise and crash into the earth. Mm -hmm. And out of this country's destruction will be born the true phoenix, which is the New World Order. Mm -hmm. And it can only be done by the way that they've set their agenda up, by destroying America. America is uh, fitted into the whole agenda as it stands in the, at this current time, and as it's been laid out over the last century or so in detail, ever since Albert Pike said that there would be three world wars and that the last war would be between the Muslim religion and the Christian religion, basically, I think, or the Muslim and the Jewish religion. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you actually have things being laid out so far ahead of time and that the United States plays such a pivotal role to its own great loss, to its own destruction, and that everything that's being done in Russia now that you're concerned about, uh, people name this every day as being in the Bible, in the Old and the New Testament. And when one looks into the Bible from the Christian perspective, uh, it can very easily be seen that this country is actually the Babylon, Babylon the Great, who deceived the nations, that's mentioned in Revelations. And it sure seems Revelation. that way, doesn't it? It seems like we are at the top of the uh, pyramid, the top of the food chain. We are a de more decadent than ever in this country with things like the iPhone, Britney Spears, MTV 1 through 46. I mean, how many networks does MTV really need, folks? I thank you for the call, Mark. Uh, you know, I think we've fallen greatly in this country from not only our morality, but our general humanity, our love for our fellow man, our caring for our neighbor. It's gone. You know, most people are in this go get them attitude. I'm out for me. Uh, I'm more concerned about my job, my car, how cool I look. You know, am I fashionable? You know, can I afford this thing? Meanwhile, banks are failing, houses are, are being taken, uh, you know, our dollars being devalued on a, on a whole separate level. So, you know, I'm not one of these prophecy guys. I don't talk about the Bible prophecies. I don't talk about Nostradamus. I don't even talk about. You know, I talk about people within the last 100, maybe even 200 years that have put it down on paper as a social prediction, you know, through engineering. But as far as biblical prophecy, I tend to stay away from that stuff, although it is very, very interesting. And, you know, not only Bible prophecy have I watched, but, you know, Jordan Maxwell's material is great. Uh, I'm a big fan of Anthony J. Hilder. Uh, all these great granddaddies of the uh, New World Order, or anti-New World Order movement, I should say. I have some great, great info. Let's take a few more callers. Let's go to Rick in Texas. Rick, what's on your mind? Hi, Jason. Um, I, first, I want to say thank you uh, because uh, you're, uh, you participated in Loose Change, the second edition. That's what woke me up a couple of years ago. Cool. And uh, I, was, uh, I wanted to call in because uh, Bob Chapman made a very important um, saying, when he, statement when he said that one of the most the biggest things we could do would be to fire all of Congress. Uh, I am the uh, one of the national organizers and the founders of uh, 
firecongress.meetup.com. And uh, we're not making any money on this, but we want to kick every one of the incumbents out, as, as, as many as possible. Our goal is to kick them all out except for Ron Paul and Dennis Kucinich. And that's I would encourage right too, everybody to check us out. No, I'm that's sorry. about right. I said that's about right. Those are about the two guys that I think I might keep in Congress. So give out that site one more time. Uh, firecongress.meetup.com. And also you can read about our plan at firecongress.org. All right, man. Thank you so much for the call. I do. Be- I I believe that as well. We need to get rid of Congress, and uh, you know, Kucinich and uh, Ron Paul seem to be like the only two guys that are standing up for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. So I'm I'm with you there, my friend.